Hey everyone, I'm Alexis the Girl Queen. Love me, I know you do. And today, 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 we are going to be talking about Battle Sister Squads. One of the most useful and dangerous units in the game currently. Big blobs of Battle Sisters with a 3 plus, 4 plus invulnerable save are going to be huge on the battlefield. I'm going to be going over their basic tactics, gear, loadouts, and how I would use them in my force. Anyway, let's take a look. Okay, Adeptus Sororitas Battle Sister Squads. Battle Sisters are going to make up the bulk of your army, and no matter what combination you use with them, they're usually pretty solid. Laid out, I have quite a few different options. Heavy flamethrowers, heavy bolters. Don't take multi multimeltas, they're not that good. That's probably the one thing that I will say. It's multi multimeltas are just eh. They're meh at best. It's probably why I don't own any. <laughs> Sister Battle Squads come in three different sizes, and these are the sizes you usually want to play them at. You have the five girl squad, 10 girl squad, and 15 girl squad. You'll notice that some of the battle sisters are missing. Those are the sister superiors, special weapons, heavy weapons as options. There's also the Amagifier, which I actually forgot to put out on this uh, video, but I would actually highly suggest you don't use it. I don't really find too much success with it, although in certain points it can be useful. Moving on, there is multiple ways that you want to run your Sisters of Battle, depending on the order you bring them with. There are two really good orders. The rest are kind of meh, and that is the Order of the Bloody Rose and the Order of the Eben Chalice. If you're bringing Eben Chalice, small girl squads can actually be really effective. If you're bringing Bloody Rose, you want to bring big squads. And the reason for this is because close combat versus using the Axe of Faith. Now, how I would suggest running your sisters. Your sisters are going to be the main bulk of getting you your Axe of Faith. Your faith points. Fate points. I'm going to get those two terms interchangeable and mess them up all the time, only because I play a lot of Dark Heresy, as you guys know, on the channel. Now, if you're doing two small squads, there are two small squads, uh, five girl small squads, there's a multiple different options for transport you can take, but if you're going to take the Repressor, I would highly suggest you put two small girl squads in it over one big girl squad. If you're taking a brigade detachment, multiple small units are actually still very effective, though you do have to get one model from each unit into base contact to actually attack with it. So keep that in mind while going through this video. Now, let's talk about different weapon combinations. You could go for the bog standard all bolters and not really do too much, and that's kind of the most inefficient way of running sisters. The more efficient version of it would be running three storm bolters in a squad of 15. So you have a ton of bolter shots, as well as being able to boost them with the Axe of Faith. Storm bolters are only two points apiece, so six points of upgrades is extremely useful. The Sister Superior can still carry a storm bolter and her chain sword. Keep that in mind. One of the combinations that I usually like doing based on my transports is if I'm taking a Rhino or a... Well, let's just say the Rhino for right now. So I'm taking a Rhino. And I want to put a big squad in it. I'll put a squad of 10, probably with close assault weapons. This usually is the melted guns or flamethrowers, depending. Or strictly storm bolters if I need them to be in a certain spot. Typically what I do with storm bolters, though, is I hug them more towards an objective or advance them in a blob. So storm bolters are still your best option. And one of the fun ways you can run them is actually taking two five girl units with three storm bolters apiece and sticking them inside a repressor. The repressor has six firing points allowing all six storm bolters to fire out of it, which is actually really, really, really nasty to your opponent. You can also do the same thing with a retributor squad with heavy bolters. 
can also stick another Retributor squad in there and have six heavy bolters firing out of it. Just some food for thought. Now, combining weapons is not really the best, even though you look at Holy Trinity and you think it's really good, but Holy Trinity is going to be more of a Retributor thing versus a Battle Sister squad thing. But you can achieve a Holy Trinity very easily. What you need to do is take a heavy, um, a combi flamer, boop, two melted guns, and 15 girls. Squad total of 15, it's 13. No, it's 12. Wow, I don't math well. Actually, I think I did put 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yeah, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we go. I can math, I promise. This combination will allow you to take the melted guns, fire at a tough target, and then use the bolters to actually take out the target. Uh, more or less, you're using mass firepower to try to remove a target. Or what you could do is go flamer, melta melta in a dominion squad, but we'll talk about dominions another time. Now, if you're building your army around Holy Trinity, which is actually a really fun build, uh, strictly fun, not competitive, but fun. There are different versions of a build based around fun and competitive. For a more competitive build, I would actually suggest the Storm Bolter in large squads, but if you are taking transports and doing a more mechanized force, I would suggest taking two Melta Guns with a Combi Melta and sticking them inside a Repressor. A simple five girl squad will suffice and do this multiple times. They're pretty cheap for what they do and out of it you get six Melta Guns to fire out of the Repressor or you stick them in a Rhino, jump them out later and swarm, or you stick them in an immolator, rock, rock right up to your opponent as a counter assault unit, flame them, and then the next turn disembark and kill the remainder. The other fun way to run them is, swap this out for this, swap these girls for these girls. Flamer, flamer, combi, flamer, two bolters. Doing two squads like this inside a rhino repressor, or one squad inside an immolator is also extremely efficient. Immolators are really good at character transport, keep that in mind, for if you want to get early drops on your opponents. This combination allows you to do some fun stuff, allows you to burn your opponent pretty easily, but you could also swap out a heavy flamethrower for a, well, a flamethrower for a heavy flamethrower and deal more damage. I used to do this combination which actually works surprisingly well. Um, you would use a, I would actually use a combi melta with the squad. Combi melta, melta, two heavy flamethrowers. So how you would achieve this is simply with two squads of battle sisters. You would just boop, boop, and then let's just pretend that this is a combi melta that I took out. So you do two squads inside of a presser, and you would have four melta shots and two heavy flamethrower shots as well as the two heavy flamethrower shots from this and the storm bolter. It would be a really efficient way of running this if you wanted to kill multiple units or weaken or pick off weak units. Now, let's put these girls back. Boop, 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 and... Sister Superiors have a plethora of options of combi weapons, plasma pistols. I think they can even take inferno pistols now, but I may be completely mistaken. Let me just double check if they decided to give it to them or not. Oop. Where are you? There we go. Battle Sisters. One Battle Sister may replace her bolt gun with a weapon from the specialist weapon list, which... Yep, you take Melta Flamer or Storm Bolter, Specialist or Heavy Weapon. One can take the Banner, the Simulacrum Imperial, Emperialis, or however you want to, the Banner. I'm just going to call it the Banner. And a Sister Superior may replace her Bolt Pistol with a weapon from the Pistol list. Now this actually does include the Inferno Pistol. Which, if you're going to go for close combat sisters, might not be the worst option. Inferno Pistol, Power Maul, or Power Axe, 
plus a few storm bolters might actually be effective for Bloody Rose. Now, I wouldn't say it's the most efficient way of running a Battle Sister, as I would suggest Storm Bolter, Chain Sword. This one has a bent Chain Sword that I still have to fix. Storm Bolter, Chain Sword, and a few other things, but getting bogged down and locked into combat with an Inferno Pistol is terrifying for your opponent. Keep in mind, all Battle Sisters have Bolt Pistols, so even locked in combat, they can fire, then they can shoot, and, well, they can fire, then they can do close combat. They are strength 3 on the second turn of combat, though, so keep that in mind, even with Bloody Rose. If they are countercharged as Bloody Rose, they do get the um, plus 1 to attack. They perform a heroic intervention and all sorts of other things. If you are taking mass blobs of infantry, which I highly suggest, as it's a lot of fun this edition, I want to actually buff out my sisters to take a list of, what is it, uh, 3, 6, 90 sisters of battle. 90 sisters of battle, you're going to need a Preacher, War Hymns, or Uriah Jokobus. I actually really am digging Jokobus this edition. I think he's amazing for his ability of keeping them alive and keeping them in the fight. Also, if you are doing the Canon S combo, you want to bring a... Dialogus or Delgatus or however you want to pronounce its name, the ugliest model in all of 40k that has rules, because we, we all know about the Eldar Slave Girls, those are pretty bad, and a Hospitaler. This one is just filling in for the Hospitaler because I forgot to grab her out. Hospitalers can heal up your smaller units, but expect those to die pretty quickly, but a Hospitaler's real bonus is to bigger squads, um, always remember that you can do the Act of Faith bubble with your Canon S, where you try to heal her and then use um, Vessel of the Emperor's Will or something like that. The three-point stratagem to affect all units and heal them. If your opponent does not deal with your units immediately, keeping them alive will be your top priority as you move forward. Due to their lack of range being 24 inches for the most part, unless you take heavy bolters, you will have to move up the battlefield towards your opponent. If you do the bubble that I showed you in the previous videos of getting a 4-up and vulnerable save on the entire army, then, well, your opponent's going to have a very tough time digging through this. In my last battle report, you saw how effective a repressor was with a 4-up and vulnerable save even when I took it and surrounded my army with it so that it would die first turn, it actually survived. A Rhino is 74 points in this configuration with double Storm Bolter. That with a 4-up invulnerable save is actually insane. Same with the um, Immolator. If you're going to take one, take it with dual in, um, the Flamethrowers. The Immolation Flamethrowers is the, the best option. Now... Let's go into battle tactics. As I said before, I would more than likely keep these with the two different orders. Order of this um, Sacred Rose, not Sacred Rose, Order of the Bloody Rose, and Order of Iban Chalice. Iban Chalice if I'm going for uh, Acts of Faith, Bloody Rose if I'm going for close combat. Now, what makes these girls so efficient is these tiny bases. The 25 mil base is probably the most broken thing in all of 8th edition right now. A lot of people are starting to realize this, and especially realizing this after they've bumped up the orc size base because of close combat capabilities from them. But Sisters of Battle get 90 attacks on the charge from a squad of 15, which is insane. How they do this is there's 15 girls per squad, and let's just assume the it's a little bit more with the canon S, but you get what I mean. You have 15 girls per squad, they get two attacks, okay, when they charge. They're strength four on the charge. Then, on top of that, you do the act of faith from your Canon S, who is Ebon Chalice, because I'm not going to forget that this time, and you use the will of the, um, the three-point um, stratagem to make them all attack again. That gives them a total of 90 attacks. The Sister Superior, if she has a chainsword, will have two base, plus one for chainsword, plus one for um, Bloody Rose, and then if you have Jokobus nearby, it's another plus one, so your Sister Superior has five attacks. Actually, wait, I think more. Two base, one Chainsword, 
if you're doing Chainsaw and obviously. And then one for Bloody Rose, one for Joker Bus. Yeah, five attacks. Or you could do four attacks and take a power weapon and Infernal Pistol. Now do you see how efficient these little girls are? Now, I know some of you may be thinking, well, Alexis, you can't get 90 of, you can't get all 15 in combat. Well, you can. So over here, we have my demons. So we're just going to move some stuff aside and put these guys in range. Boop, boop, boop. Now, I'm just going to put out a simple blob of demons. And these are second edition demons, and they are hilarious looking. Look, look at this guy. He's funny as hell. These are blood letters, by the way. Okay, so we have our squad of 10 blood letters. We are going to take a Sister Superior with a combi flamethrower, and let's just say the 15 sisters. So, we have all of these girls, and they're going to go into combat. Now, keep in mind the base-to-base -base contact. The second you make it, you have to stay locked into combat. So you just want to stay just a little bit further away. Never actually lock in base, just try to get as close as you can without locking. Now, the new rules of 40k 8th edition state that anything within two inches of a model in contact with them, base contact, so even if you are in base contact, you get to stretch out two inches. Now the cool thing about that is just how far two inches actually is. Only one millimeter of this base needs to be in base contact. Keep this in mind. So, what we're going to do is we're going to measure this. I'm going to move these demons over for simplicity's sake, and so I can get the tape measure next to it. So, from the Sister Superior, we're going to put her right against this guy, and we're going to measure right to the edge of her base. So, see how far two inches goes? This is important because this means you can do something like this. You could put one girl, another girl, and then there's still a centimeter afterwards and have that girl attack. You can get four lines of infantry to attack, which means you can fit all 15 girls with just And we'll get these all together. Touching, let's just say there's a heavy flamethrower in here, and for some reason, and a sister superior, and a flamethrower. So, now we just need to put all these girls there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Keep an eye on how small this bubble actually is. This is tiny, so you only need to make base contact with two or three enemy models in order to get every single sister into combat. You keep Jogobus nearby, you keep your Cannoness nearby, and you keep your Celestine nearby, and they have four attacks each if you get the Act of Faith off. Base is only two. Okay, keep that in mind. On the charge, they become strength four, so long as they are bloody rose. This is strictly bloody rose, which is, in my opinion, the best way to run your standard battle sister squads. With this, you are going to get a ton of attacks, and you are easily going to kill most enemies. Even big, tough targets will have a tough time digging through four up and vulnerable saves, Three up if you actually have the Magifier and use the once per game ability, which I did state wrong in one of my videos, and I do apologize about that. <sighs> now, we went over the transports and their effectiveness, but overall, the Battle Sisters can actually operate independently of transportation. They can operate at both range and close combat. They're most efficient at mid-range, and they can take a plethora of weapons for dealing with any and all opponents. You will notice that they don't have too much plasma, as they do the Holy Trinity, Bolter, Melta, Flamethrower, but you can still get some plasma with combi plasma weapons and, com and plasma pistols. 
though I don't suggest it, actually. Plasma in the Sister of Battle Army is kind of meh, to be honest. So it really just goes to whatever you feel like doing. If you're taking b five Battle Sisters with no upgrades, it's 45 points. Uh, I think it's 45, 46, or 745, 50, 51 points for three Storm Bolters. So it's a dirt cheap eight, uh, troop choice. You can maximize this in your army by taking a ton of them. You can get a brigade detachment fairly cheap if you go min with just Storm Bolters. And it's actually an effective build. That all being said, I believe we covered everything I wanted to talk about with the Battle Sisters. Different ways of running your Battle Sister squads, assuming you are taking transports. Different ways you're running them on the tabletop themselves. Whether you want to dedicate them to anti-tank, anti-infantry, still anti-infantry, still anti-infantry, or do a plethora of other things. Keep in mind, with split fire, you can actually take melted guns to kill different targets, meaning you can have those melted guns fire at one target while all of the bolters fire at another and deal with the two threats at once. Mixing and matching weapons is fairly decent in the Sister of Battle Battle squads, but I would never take a Melta, a Flamethrower, and a Combi Plasma. If I'm going to take weapons, I usually take them in trios, so three Melta guns being Melta, Melta, Combi, Melta, or I take Flamer, Flamer, Combi, Flamer, or three Storm Bolters. I don't really use the heavy bolters in my squads, mostly because you only get one and it makes it so that your squad isn't moving as much. So I tend to stick my heavy bolters for my Retributor squads only, as I see them as more efficient out there than in the Battle Sister squads. I also don't use multi, multi melters in my Battle Sister squads at all, at all, because I don't really see their viability in a Battle Sister squad. I actually don't see the viability of multi melters anyway. There are too many points. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Base Battle Sisters, really good value, really good. 10 girl squads with three special weapons, extremely good. 15 girl squads with three storm bolters or three of uh, weapon combos, extremely good. There is no downside to the Battle Sister squad. If you want to take the Imperialis, uh, the banner, it does help with the survivability of your big squads. So if you are taking a bubble around your character, like you want to keep your cannon S alive and not assaulted, you would take the banner with this squad. This way, uh, this cannon S will never die because these girls won't go away. You can also hide a Hospitaler in there. We're just going to say she's the Hospitaler for now. And easily keep this unit alive walking forward across the entirety of the battlefield. Now, that being said, I still think you need to take a Delgadis the entire... Like, if you're taking a Battle Sister squad, I would honestly take one of those. They're really efficient. Take one of those in almost every army. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time, we are going to be talking about, well, we're going to be moving on to the elites in the army. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please check out the comments in the comments section. No, please comment in the comments section down below, as well as checking out the description. In there, you'll find all of my social medias. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I post selfies almost every other day, and I post uh, army updates on there as well. You can also follow me on my Discord. My Discord link is always open if you're a patron and it unlocks other options in there. Or you can check out my Patreon where you can go and support the channel, which is amazing because it goes a long way to helping me build these armies, bring you the battle reports, and do the best that I can, as well as keeping me fed. And I like food. It keeps my ample supply of Skittles ready. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm Alexis the Go Queen. I love you guys. Bye.